Hey, 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 Gerdias here. This is the video for graphing linear equations using the slope and y intercept. Now, hope everyone's having a good day. Here we go. So, at this point in time, you should recognize what this equation is. This is slope intercept form. Let's write this down again just in case we don't have it or it doesn't matter. We should write it down again, anyways, because of how important it is. So slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m represents the slope and b represents the y intercept. The y and the x, they stay there as y and x. Those represent points that are on that line, okay? But we'll look at that later. A reminder, slope is also known as rise over run, rise over run. Okay, and that's super important, especially for when we're actually graphing these functions. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at an equation. Let's say we have a linear equation that looks like, like 2x plus 3. We're going to identify the slope, which is 2. Identify the y-intercept, which is 3. And then we're going to plot those on a graph and actually graph that line on a coordinate plane. Okay, so let's look at an example here. So here I have my goal is to graph y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. So what I need to do is first I need to figure out what is my slope and then I also need to figure out what is my y-intercept. Okay, and that's what we have to do. Always we want to do that first is we want to identify the two things that we're working with here. So knowing that it's y equals mx plus b, my slope is always a number that's a coefficient of x or attached to the x. So my slope is two-thirds. Whoa, I don't know why I did that. My slope is two-thirds. My y-intercept is the, is the constant over here, the extra negative one. So when graphing lines in slope intercept form, we always want to start at our y intercept. And it just makes our life a lot easier. So because my y intercept is negative one, I know I can find that on my graph really, really easily. The y intercept is negative one because this line is going to cross this y axis and I'll label this as the y axis just so we remember that. Over here is the x axis. It's going to cross y at negative one, which is right here, negative one. So there is my starting point for this graph. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna use our slope from our starting point, from the y-intercept. So that's why it's so important to know that slope is rise over run. Because the two represents my rise, the three represents my run, okay? So because of that, I have my first point of the line. This line crosses the y-axis at negative one. Now from this point, I'm gonna use my rise and run to find my next point. My rise is two, one, two. My run is one, two, three. There's my next point. So I went up two over three. My rise is one, two. My run is one, two, three. And I should be able to do it again. And I can keep doing this up two over one, two, three. And that gives me a rise of two, a run of three. And then if I connect these points, I have a straight line. Now I could also go backwards. So because I went up and to the right, if I want to maintain the same direction, if I go down, that's okay, one, two. But if I want to, if I go right, is this going to be on the same line? This is not. This is going to start making this weird, like this weird V, like sideways V shape. And we don't want that. So if I decide to go the other way, just because this is the way the graph goes, I can go down two, but I can go left three, one, two. And if we look, this should be a positive slope, as my slope is positive two-thirds, which means I should be going uphill from left to right. And I am going uphill. So I do have a positive slope, and it's good. So I have a y-intercept of negative one, I have a slope of two over three. And that's it. So let's write down a couple steps for that. So step one. Step one is I want you guys to start at y-intercept. So start at the y-intercept. Step two, use slope from y-intercept. And then we could put a little note on step two. If positive, go up. If negative, go down. 
and this is just for the initial and we'll show you what I mean by that okay um, so for what I mean by that is for y equals two-thirds x minus one and again pause this if you need to get this down then listen to what I'm, what I'm gonna say here so because I started from my y-intercept because my slope is positive I went up from my rise and I still went to the right for my run up for my rise right from my run if it's a negative slope we're just gonna go down for our rise we're still gonna go to the right in the direction so it's gonna show us so it's gonna create that downhill and we'll look at that right here so here we go I gotta identify my slope and then I have to identify my y-intercept so my slope is negative 5 over 2 my y-intercept is positive 2 so step one says to start at your y-intercepts. That's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the y-intercept of positive 2, 1, 2. Bam, I already have a point that's on this line. Now step two says we're going to use our slope from our y-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to, whoops, went back too far. I'm going to use my slope from my y-intercept. It says if it's a positive, go up. If it's negative, go down. So here's what I mean by that. Because my slope is negative right here. Because my slope is negative. Instead of going up 5 over 2, I'm just going to go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2, 1, 2. I'm still going to the right 2, but the negative slope just means I'm going to go down to start off. I can go down 5 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2. I have multiple points. If I wanted to go up 5, that's okay, because now I can see the direction of the line. You see how the line is going downhill? I know I'm drawing it backwards, but it's really going downhill from left to right. So what that means is I could go up one, two, three, four, five, but I gotta maintain this line, so I should go left now. I'm gonna go left instead to maintain this straight line right here. If I had gone right, I would have that weird sideways V again. And this line goes forever in each direction, that's why I'm gonna draw arrows on the end to show that this keeps going, it keeps going. These aren't the only values that I could use. This is just gonna keep going, okay? And that's it. Start at your y-intercept, use your slope from there. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is go ahead and try this one on your own. See if you can identify your slope, see if I can identify your y-intercept, and try to graph it on your own. Now notice, though, what your slope is, and just because there's no denominator doesn't mean that we can't add one. Because it's negative 3, it's the same thing as negative 3 over 1. So try it on your own, pause it, and then see how you do. Okay. I think it's joke time. All right, so... Here we go. How do you make how do you make seven an even number? So how do you make the number seven an even number? You just take out the S. <laughs> All right, cool. Get it? Seven spelled with even in it. So if you take out the S, seven's an even number. Bam. All right, here we go. Moving on. Whoops. So here's my slope. My slope is negative 3 over 1. My y-intercept is negative 1. So I'm going to start at negative 1. And now I'm going to use my slope. My slope is negative 3 over 1. Yes, I know it just said negative 3, but again, we always can put a 1 in the denominator. So my rise is 3. My run is 1. So my rise is 3. My run is 1. So I'm going to go, my rise is negative 3. So I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, over 1. Down three, one, two, three, over one. And I can keep doing this forever if I wanted to. I can go the opposite direction, up three, one, two, three, but now I'm going the opposite direction again, left to one. One, two, three, over one. And I should have a straight line. Ooh. It was straight all the way up until the end. My bad. There we go. And there we have it. Okay, and this would be the line y equals negative three x minus one. I could check any one of these points and plug them in for y and x to make sure that this line is correct. Here's what I mean by that. I could find, like, this is the point on my line right here that we plotted. I can find the xy coordinate of this point. So, remember, xy coordinate of the point. So, I could say this point right here is negative one, positive two. So, there's my x, there's my y coordinate of this particular point. Negative one, positive two. So what I could do is I could actually take this negative 1, 2 and plug it into this equation and see if it works. Because the 2 is my y value, and then the negative 1 is my x value. So I plug in 2 for y. I'm going to write out negative 3 times whatever my x is, negative 1, minus 1, and see if this is equal to each side. 
So I took this negative one, two, and plugged it into this equation. I could have done this with any one of these points. It does not matter, and it should work every single time. I just picked a random point, this one. Do I have to pick this point? No. What this is doing is just checking to make sure that I graphed it correctly. Negative three times negative three is positive three because a negative times a negative is always positive. Three minus one is two, so my left side does equal my right side. That means I'm good. I graphed it correctly. Okay, last one. Might as well try it again. More practice, the better. Okay, and then I have actually something else after this, but this is the last just strictly graphing problem. Okay, so we're going to start at our y-intercept of positive three. One, two, three. Hopefully you should have paused this. If you didn't pause it now, finish the graph. So my y-intercept is positive 3, so that's where I'm starting. And now my slope is 1 over 2, So and now this one's positive. So it's rise over run. So that means if it's positive, I'm going to go uphill, 1, up 1, because that's my rise. And then my run is 1, 2. Up 1, 1, 2. Up 1, 1, 2. And I can keep doing this forever. Now if I wanted to go backwards, I would go down 1, left 2. Down 1, left 2. I missed the points, but the line wasn't terribly, it's actually fairly straight, which isn't bad. And my line should look something like that. Now again, if you wanted to, you could test any point that you have right here, any point and plug it into this equation to see if it works. So like I could plug in this point right here. I have one, two, three, four. So this is the point two, four. So I should be able to plug in the point two, four and see if it fits in this equation, okay? Because remember, this is my X, this is my Y. Okay, the first point of an ordered pair is always x, the second point is always y. So I can plug that in, 4 for y equals 1 half times x, which is 2, plus 3. Okay, this is almost like all these points are like on an xy table, if we didn't realize x. Before we were graphing using a table, what I did is I just figured out what all my xy table values are, because this is the rule of this table. So if I have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so I could actually plug in those x values and out comes my y. Okay. So, if I had plugged in this point into my equation, it should work. Two times, one half times two is just one. I cross simplified here because this is like two over one. So one half times two is one because half of two is one. One plus three is four. So I have four equals four, which means the left side equals right side, which means this point does work with this equation, which means this point is on this line, which means I probably graphed it correctly. Now, sometimes you're going to have word problems, and on these word problems, you're going to have to interpret the graphs. You might have to graph it from a word problem, given the equation, and then you're going to have to answer some questions using your graph. Okay, so Ken has a weekly goal of burning 2,400 calories by taking walks. Uh, walking does burn a lot of calories. So here's my equation, and the equation is neg y equals negative 300x plus 2,400. Represents the number of calories y Ken has left to burn. So how many calories is he going to have left to burn? after x hours of walking which is burning 300 calories per hour so that's why it's negative 300 so he's basically starting off he's eating about 2400 calories a day by walking x amount of hours he's going to burn 300 calories per hour okay now first we want to graph it so we're going to start at 2400 because that's my y-intercept and we're going down 300 over one luckily this graph was nice and it was counting by 300 so it's down 300 over 1, like so, okay. And those are all my values for this graph. I have a negative slope. Now what I can do, so if you walked 8 hours, he would burn all 2,400 calories, okay? Now, using this graph, though, I should be able to answer a lot of different questions. And we're just going to show you how we would use the graph to answer one question because all the other questions would be very, very, very similar. After how many hours will Ken have 600 calories left to burn? So we know that the y value tells us right here. y is how many he has left to burn. So I'm looking for when my y is 600 will tell me what, how, how many hours it took. So if I go to y is 600 right here and I find where that is on my graph, at y is 600, that took, for, for to have 600 hours left, that took him 6 hours. So my answer is 6 hours. I could also say, well, how many hours is it going to take for Ken to reach his goal each week? How many hours does he have to walk to burn those 2,400 calories? So how many hours does he have to walk to burn all 2,400 calories? Well, to burn all 2,400 calories, whoop, 
That means you'd have zero left. He has to walk eight hours. So we should be able to look at this graph and answer multiple questions. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Hopefully this helped. Big thing. And let me go back to the first problem. Step one is we always just start at our y-intercept right here. And then from there, we use our slope, which is our rise over our run. If it's positive, make sure you go up and to the right. If it's negative, go down and to the right. Okay? Let me know if you guys have any questions. This was fun. Let's do it again sometime. Gradius.